got involved with uh, Niab and Boffin on a project to look at harvest weed seed control and the use of that in the UK environment. Um, that started about two years ago um, with just one project, uh, one piece of equipment with Niab, where they were testing a case combine equipped with one of our seed mills. And then last year we expanded that, we added three farmers. So we have Jake Freestone, who's working with a John Deere combine. And we have Adam Driver, who's got a Kloss Lexian. And then the last uh, is Ted Holmes uh, with Velcor Farms, who's running a New Holland. And for this coming season, we've added a fourth farm, which is uh, Keith Challen, and he's running a Fent Ideal Combine with one of our, all of them have one of our seed mills on. So the first couple of years was really interesting. We, I would say we're still learning to put the data together, but we were able to collect a good amount of information. There was a little bit of kind of maybe a unique situation last year with black grass where maybe more of the seed was retained at harvest than would normally, so, but we did see good positive results on black grass where we saw some increased kill rates. Um, but we need to repeat that because black grass was probably a little bit different maturing than a normal season. Uh, but with brome and ryegrass, we saw very good positive results where both of those weeds were at time of harvest still on the, the seeds were on the plants. So we were able to harvest them and we got good control with both of those. This year, what we're trying to do is uh, with Boffin's help, we're trying to organize a number of farmers. I think 50 farmers we're trying to get to do seed counts on their farm to look at what the available seed is at the time of harvest so we can start to get our kind of collective thoughts around how effective can we be when we're trying to put the harvest together uh, to, to actually harvest these weeds because in order for our mill to kill the weeds we have to put it through the mill system and that means they have to be harvestable weeds if they've dropped their seed before harvest we're not able to do that so this project that uh, Niab and Boffin is coordinating to count weed seeds prior to harvest is really important to get an understanding and a baseline of that information. So we've come here to Beaver Castle uh, in uh, Nottinghamshire to see Keith Challen a Beaver Farming Company who's had a Redicop SCU fitted to his Fent 10 Combine. So let's go and find out how they're getting on. So this Redicop isn't the only unit in Europe. The mill design, uh, the underslung horizontal mill design is not specific to the Fent combine. In fact, it's on John Deere's New Holland's Case, uh, Kloss and Fent as well. Uh, but this is the first unit on a Fent machine in Europe. So we're installing the data acquisition system to check how much power it needs. Well, the SCU I've seen operate in the Australian market. I've seen it operate in the North American market. I've also seen it operate in the South American market and, of course, Europe. Um, each market has its own challenges. For example, there's generally a lot more wear in Australia. Um, North America, many hours on it, very similar to Australia in many ways. But heavier crops, so in that regard, it's more similar to Europe. Uh, Europe has the heaviest crops that we'll see, but generally the lowest amount of wear. This particular unit is a fairly standard unit, actually. The mill system is a mature product. The chopper system is also a mature product. And so there's not a lot of tweaking that we're doing. We're basically just installing and quantifying the power requirements in normal harvest conditions. Well, it doesn't look as though we're going to do much harvesting today with the uh, Redicop SCU in bits. But um, let's go and take a look at the black grass and see what that looks like. So we're in a field of wheat here. This is X Day's fourth wheat. Uh, we're on very heavy clay soils here. So this field in particular is about 89% clay, very high magnesium and we have poor drainage. So the soil lies wet and black grass has been a particular problem here for the last 30 years. Now, we had thought up until this year we were beating it and now we've got the worst black grass in this field we've ever seen. So historically, uh, the black grass here is all triple R resistant and has been for many, many years. So 
the answer doesn't come out of a can, you know, while we can get probably 90% control, that's all we get, and it's that 10% that's killing us. So over the years, we've tried everything. We've gone to spring cropping and brought spring barley into the rotation, and that has helped. Uh, and we were cleaner than we are now. It's been this protracted year where the herbicides worked brilliantly until March, and after that, everything grew. And so the next step for us was there is a number of ears or a number of seeds on ears at harvest with the black grass. So if we can control it through the combine, that's going to add another couple of percent to the picture. So for us, the, the SCU was the next logical step, really, because uh, as well as black grass, we've got brome. I'm very nervous about the ingress of rye grass. It's in the area. Um, I wanted to be able to control weed seeds on the combine as well as volunteers. So when I heard about the uh, SCU project, it made perfect sense. So if we can destroy the viability of the seed to a very high percentage, then that's a big step forward. We're not trying to kill something that's grown, we've prevented it from growing. And that for me is fundamental. I know, oh, no, that, that's fantastic, Jake. No, that's really good news. Well, look, we'll be there in about an hour and a half, okay? Great, see you then. Well, that was Jake Freestone. Great news, he started combining. So let's go to Tewkesbury and have a look at the SCU in action. We're here in a crop of um, hybrid barley. It's hybrid winter barley. We've got a day of combining ahead of us today, which is good. So crops yielding well. And the noise you can hear on the back of the combine is the Redicrop seed control unit. So that is what we've been running for the last two years with Aurea and Redicop uh, as part of our trial. So the farming system we operate here, which we've done for about 10 years now, is moving into a more regenerative system. So putting the soil at the, at the, the focus, if you like, of what we're doing. So all of our different operations are focused around the, the sort of minimizing the impact on our soil. The reason why we're focusing on that is for organic matter reasons. So can we increase organic matter? What if effect does that have? And then you have a look at the impact of, of pesticides on the soil and the soil health, the, the earthworms, the, you know, the, the microflora in there. And anything we can re do to reduce that impact is something that we think we need to explore. Um, one of those challenges are, are weeds and rather than relying on certain herbicides to control those weeds, which we know build up, builds up resistance, um, we were excited to be invited to take part in this trial to have a look at a physical control method of those weed seeds. So the weed seeds come over the sieves and they are then put through two mills um, which physically crush and crack those seeds, stopping them germinating, um, and then they get spread with the chaff and the straw on the rest of the field. So for us, it's another part of the armory about how we can use this to control the weeds that we have on the farm. Building on from last year, the Seed Scout project is looking at uh, assessing the amount of seed that is still on the plant at the time of harvest. And this is really important because we know that 98% of the seed that is consumed by the combine uh, goes through the seed control unit and is destroyed. The variable factor, if you like, is what is still attached to that plant at the time of harvest. And that will vary year on year. I think different seasons will have an impact on that. This year, it's quite a late season. Um, it's quite damp. So we are actually finding, uh, I think, probably a bit more seeds still on the plants when we are actually harvesting them. So our first year was harvest 2022, um, went really well. A few modifications for this year in terms of um, some attachments in the back to make it easier to engage and disengage the unit. To be honest, we run it all the time. We're focused on using this control method to help us with our weeds. So we run it in wheat, we run it in barley, we run it in oilseed rape. We don't run it in beans. It tends to just bung up a little bit in there. Um, but it worked really well last year. Fuel use with it disengaged. We did do some fields actually. This was one of them where we didn't use it last year. Um, where it's engaged, and this was on a slightly smaller combine, it was a John Deere 685, um, was using about two litres of diesel more per hectare. So yes, a bit of an extra cost, a bit of an extra carbon footprint, 
uh, but actually in the grand scheme of things that's a, a very insignificant amount uh, when you're looking at the overall benefits that this can give us.